Good evening. Welcome in the name of our Savior Jesus to worship here at Living Shepherd. Thank you so much for joining us tonight as we celebrate the birth of a Savior given for you. Our service begins tonight on page 3 in our worship folder with our opening reading from Isaiah chapter 25. On this mountain, the Lord Almighty will prepare a feast of rich food for all peoples, a banquet of aged wine, the best of meats and the finest of wines. On this mountain, he will destroy the shroud that enfolds all peoples, the sheet that covers all nations. He will swallow up death forever. The sovereign Lord will wipe away the tears from all faces. He will remove the disgrace of his people from all the earth. The Lord has spoken. In that day they will say, Surely this is our God. We trusted in him, and he saved us. This is the Lord. We trusted in him. Let us rejoice and be glad in his salvation. This is the word of our God. Please stand. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. To us a child is born. To us a son is given. Today in the town of David a Savior has been born to you. He is Christ the Lord. From the fullness of his grace we have received one blessing after another. Who will come let us adore. Sing to the Lord a new song, for he has done marvelous things. His right hand and his holy arm have worked salvation for him. The Lord has revealed his righteousness to the nations. All the ends of the earth have seen the salvation of our God. But who can endure the day of his coming? Who can stand when he appears? Restore us again, O God, our Savior, and put away your displeasure toward us. Show us your unfailing love, O Lord, and grant us your When the time had fully come, God sent his son, born of a woman, born under law, to redeem those under law, that we might receive the full rights of sons. The word became flesh and made his dwelling among us. We have seen his glory, the glory of the one and only, who came from the Father, full of grace and truth. I bring you good news of great joy that will be for all the people. Today, in the town of David, 
A Savior has been born to you. He is Christ the Lord. Glory, Glory to God, God in the highest. Tonight we are stepping back in time, not just to that night when the Savior was born, but to 700 years before that child was born in Bethlehem, to the prophet Isaiah, who gave us all sorts of information, all sorts of details for God's people about this coming Savior. Our service is divided into five parts tonight. The first part is the child foretold, readings from the book of Isaiah, that promise this coming child. Therefore, the Lord himself will give you a sign. The virgin will be with child and will give birth to a son and will call him Emmanuel. For to us a child is born, to us a son is given, and the government will be on his shoulders, and he will be called Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace. A shoot will come up from the stump of Jesse. From his roots, a branch will bear fruit. The spirit of the Lord will rest on him, the spirit of wisdom and of understanding, the spirit of counsel and of power, the spirit of knowledge and of the fear of the Lord. And he will delight in the fear of the Lord. This is the word of our God. Our next hymn is printed for you there on page five. The choir is actually going to help us sing this hymn. Uh, you'll find out as they sing that the words are two familiar Christmas hymns, uh, two familiar Christmas melodies put with new words. So you're welcome to join in singing with the choir whenever you feel comfortable.
The second part of our worship service tonight in this Christmas story as told by the prophet Isaiah explains the need why this child, why this Savior has to come. The Spirit of the Sovereign Lord is on me because the Lord has anointed me to preach good news to the poor. He has sent me to bind up the brokenhearted, to proclaim freedom for the captives and release from darkness for the prisoners to proclaim the year of the Lord's favor and the day of vengeance of our God, to comfort all who mourn and provide for those who grieve in Zion, to bestow on them a crown of beauty instead of ashes, the oil of gladness instead of mourning, and a garment of praise instead of a spirit of despair. They will be called oaks of righteousness, a planting of the Lord, for the display of his splendor. This is what God the Lord says. He who created the heavens and stretched them out, who spread out the earth and all that comes out of it, who gives breath to its people and life to those who walk on it, I the Lord have called you in righteousness. I will take hold of your hand. I will keep you and will make you to be a covenant for the people and a light for the Gentiles to open eyes that are blind, to free captives from prison, and to release from the dungeon those who sit in darkness. I am the Lord. That is my name. I will not give my glory to another or my praise to idols. See, the former things have taken place, and new things I declare. Before they spring into being, I announce them to you. This is the word of our God. Let's stand and read Isaiah 35 responsibly. The desert and the parched land will be glad. The wilderness will rejoice and blossom. Like the crocus, it will burst into bloom. It will rejoice greatly and shout for joy. The glory of Lebanon will be given to it. The splendor of Carmel and Sharon. They will see the glory of the Lord, the splendor of our God. Strengthen the feeble hands, steady the knees that give way. Say to those with fearful hearts, be strong, do not fear, your God will come. He will come with vengeance, with divine retribution, he will come to save you. Then will the eyes of the blind be opened and the ears of the deaf unstopped. Then will the lame leap by the ear, and the mute tongue shout for joy. Water will gush forth in the wilderness and streams in the desert. The burning sand will become a pool. The thirsty ground bubbles springs. In the haunts where jackals once lay, grass and reeds and papyrus will grow. And the highway will be there. It will be called the way of holiness. The unclean will not journey on it. It will be for those who walk in that way. Wicked fools will not go. No lion will be there, nor will any ferocious beast get up on it. They will not be found there. But only the redeemed will walk there, and the ransom of the Lord will return. They will enter Zion with singing. Everlasting joy will crown their heads. Gladness and joy will overtake them, and sorrow and sighing will flee away. You may be seated. Our next hymn is What Child Is This? You can find that in the red hymnals that should be located in the racks beneath the chairs in front of you. The choir will be singing the first two verses of that hymn. You're invited to join in on the third verse.
The next part of our worship service in this Christmas story as told by the prophet Isaiah is our sermon reading, Isaiah chapter 9, verses 1 through 7. Nevertheless, there will be no more gloom for those who were in distress. In the past, he humbled the land of Zebulun and the land of Naphtali, but in the future, he will honor Galilee of the Gentiles by the way of the sea along the Jordan. The people walking in darkness have seen a great light, and those living in the land of the shadow of death, a light has dawned. You have enlarged the nation and increased their joy. They rejoice before you as people rejoice at the harvest, as men rejoice when dividing the plunder. For as in the day of Midian's defeat, you have shattered the yoke that burdens them, the bar across their shoulders, the rod of their oppressor. Every warrior's boot used in battle and every garment rolled in blood will be destined for burning, will be fuel for the fire. For to us, a child is born. To us, a son is given. And the government will be on his shoulders and he will be called Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace. Of the increase of his government and peace, there will be no end. He will reign on David's throne and over his kingdom, establishing and upholding it with justice and righteousness from that time on and forever. The zeal of the Lord Almighty will accomplish this. This is the word of our God. You could study the etymology and learn that the word candle comes from the Latin candela, meaning to shine. You could examine the physics of everything that takes place right here with 
vaporization and combustion and capillary action all playing their role in a candle burning. And you could even dig into the economics of it all, why sales peak shortly before Christmas, why some of you might go home tonight, unwrap a gift, and be greeted with a candle. You can do all these things, but that won't tell you why these candles are lit here tonight at Living Shepherd Lutheran Church on Christmas Eve. Why do we do this? I it's a simple thing, really, and it's a beautiful thing, too. A candle brings light in the darkness. Of course, that still doesn't help you explain why these candles are lit, because I could go back to that wall and flip a switch and turn on these harsh overhead fluorescent lights. Why not do that? Right? Those, those lights are actually brighter, they're stronger, they're more reliable than these lights, because after all, with a simple breath, these candles can be extinguished. And so then, if it weren't for the recessed LEDs and the spotlights and these glowing wires on these trees up here, we'd be in the darkness. And maybe that's the place to start tonight in the darkness. For the people of Israel, when the prophet Isaiah wrote and spoke these words to them, that darkness was deep and thick. It was even tangible in a way. Those long-repeated slogans of pride in God's chosen people had been clouded by the rise of another powerful, seemingly favored world power, Assyria. The promises of God, which had been relayed through generations, were hushed and dimmed in faithless idolatry. And the future of a nation, a once thriving nation that seemed so promising, so sure, so certain, was shrouded in doubt and apprehension. This is the darkness into which God spoke. He used the prophet Isaiah to speak to a group of people that for the most part had abandoned worship in the one true God. They had fallen into this distressing pattern of relying on mediums and spiritists and even other nations for help and comfort and strength. The verses that come right before our sermon reading from Isaiah chapter 8 paint a really gloomy picture. They're not printed for you in the worship folder, but just listen for a moment to what God says to his people right before these verses. When men tell you to consult mediums and spiritists who whisper and mutter, should not a people inquire of their God? Why consult the dead on behalf of the living to the law and to the testimony? If they do not speak according to this word, they have no light of dawn. Distressed and hungry, they will roam through the land. When they are famished, they will become enraged and looking upward will curse their king and their God. Then they will look toward the earth and see only distress and darkness and fearful gloom and they will be thrust into utter darkness. It might be easy to, to hear those words and to think that that's just an antiquated message for a historic people. That's God talking to the people of Israel. He's not talking to us. That's not our darkness, right? And so then we run back to the lights. We run back to the candles. We run to the Christmas joys, the Christmas presents, the gatherings of family and friends and wonderful food. And we say, let's not talk about the darkness. Not tonight. Not on this night. We have to. We have to talk about the darkness. If we are going to understand that light, if we are going to comprehend that this light is for us, we have to take a moment and sit in the darkness. And that's why those opening words from Isaiah here are so critical. Isaiah chapter 9. Nevertheless, there will be no more gloom for those who were in distress. 
the light that Isaiah is talking about, the light that is reflected in these candles, the light that shines so bright at Christmas, is for those who are in distress. It's for those who go through difficulty. Is that you? I, I would imagine we could all raise our hands when we're asked that question, couldn't we? And maybe this time around the holidays has a way of emphasizing that even more with us. This isn't exactly a, a pleasant and exciting time for someone who has to face the, the echoes of loneliness in their own home. Who has to hear the creaks of the empty house. Who has to see the empty chairs and feel the empty silence. And this isn't always a glorious time for people whose, whose water heaters just broke down. Or for people who are the remnants, the discarded remnants of job cuts at work. Or for people whose, whose checkbook leaves gaps under the tree where the kid's present should be. This is hard. It is hard to go through difficulties. And God says tonight, this light is for you. It's for those living in the shadow of death. It was just three days ago when an ambulance arrived on scene at 4 o'clock in the morning to help out with an accident on I-80. And the semi-trailer slammed into that ambulance, injuring one EMT and killing another. He was 29 years old. 29. Too frequently, that lament of gone too soon reminds us of the uncertainty of human life. This is the shadow of death. And it looms over those families, and it looms over you, whether you realize it or not. You do not know when your last moment in this life will be. You don't know. It might be an accident that ends it. It might be sickness that ends it. It might just be old age. And that is hard to come to grips with. It is hard and tonight, God says, this light is for you. It's for all those of you who understand that this shadow of death looming over us really stems from a deeper, more fundamental problem. It's the problem of sin. <laughs> we don't always talk about that on Christmas Eve, do we? It's much easier to look with wonder at the Christmas trees and the Christmas lights and the Christmas presents than it is to look with honesty at the Christmas sin. This is hard to admit our faults and our failures. But we have to look into this darkness, especially tonight. We have to realize that sin is a yoke that burdens us. It's a bar that strains us. It's a, it's a rod that oppresses us. We have to understand what God says in his word. The wages of sin is death. Without sin, there would be no death. Without sin, there would be no difficulty. Without sin, there would be no distress. So this, this is our darkness. It's our darkness. And tonight, God says that the light is for all those who are in darkness. It's for you. The people walking in darkness have seen a great light. On those living in the land of the shadow of death, a light has dawned. We take a moment tonight to reflect on the darkness because it helps us to better appreciate just how perfect, how powerful, how, how fitting God's glorious light is. That is why we are here. That's why these candles get lit. That's why our Christmas celebration doesn't center on 
a plate of cookies or a mess of wrapping paper or a gathering of family and friends. Wonderful blessings, all of them wonderful. But our Christmas celebration is centered on the light that shatters our darkness. And boy, does Isaiah have a beautiful way of picturing that. You have enlarged the nation and increased their joy. They rejoice before you as people rejoice at the harvest, as men rejoice when dividing the plunder. For as in the day of Midian's defeat, you have shattered the yoke that burdens them, the bar across their shoulders, the rod of their oppressor. Every warrior's boot used in battle and every garment rolled in blood will be destined for burning, will be fuel for the fire. For those of you who battle with sin, who struggle with temptation, who toil through the troubles of this life, your Savior wins forgiveness. That yoke, that bar, that burden, it's gone. It's gone because in the darkness of your sin, a light shines. And that light shines from, from the unlikeliest of places. It shines from a blood-stained wooden cross. Because the baby born in Bethlehem would grow up. And he would live and he would walk willingly to that cross. And there at that cross, God would take your sin and nail it to Jesus' hands. And he would take Jesus' perfection, Jesus' righteousness, Jesus' holiness, and wrap it around your shoulders. This is your light. For those of you who are living in the shadow of death, who do not know when your last day or hour might be, who, who suffer because of disease and sickness and pain, your Savior destroys death. How can that be? How can it be when, when accidents still happen out on I-80? When there are still labored last breaths in hospital beds? It can be because a light shines in the darkness of death. And it shines from the unlikeliest of places. It shines from an empty rock-scarred tomb. Because that baby, born in Bethlehem, staining the cross with his blood, dies. He breathes his last and he is thrown into the tomb. But there in the tomb, because of his perfect life, because of his perfect suffering, God gives him the breath of life again. And with that same power, he speaks into your hearts, into your soul, into your body, so that even when there are accidents, even when there are diseases, even when there are funerals, you know the tomb is not your final resting place. It's not. This is your light. For those of you who go through difficulty, who face hardship and struggles, your Savior walks by your side. And no, that doesn't mean that the empty house will suddenly stop creaking. And it doesn't mean that the checkbook will suddenly stop bouncing. But it does mean that you have a Savior who walks in this dark world with you. That baby, born in Bethlehem, would grow up and his infant hands would come to no loss. His infant feet would walk through challenge and hardship. His infant heart would come to feel pain just like you do. And so the light shines in the unlikeliest of places. It shines in a real, tangible, simple manger. This is your Savior. And your Savior tempers all of your difficulties with the peace of His presence. This is your light. For to us, 
a child is born. To us, a son is given. And the government will be on his shoulders. And he will be called Wonderful, Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace. Towards the end of this service tonight, we're actually going to pass out individual candles for each of you. And those candles will all be lit, starting with this center candle, our Christ candle. And then by candlelight, we will sing that familiar Christmas hymn, Silent Night, Holy Night. And we will hear the reading of the Christmas story from Luke chapter 2. But we don't do any of this because it just gives us a nice, warm, fuzzy, nostalgic feeling. We don't do this because... It helps you all to participate in our worship service, and we certainly don't do this because it sets a mood. No. We do this to remember that in that manger is the light that shatters our darkness. We do it to remember just how fitting, just how perfect this gift of light is, a Savior who comes and lives and suffers and dies and rises again. We do it to remember that this glorious gift of life comes with a beautiful tag. And on that tag is written this. For you, from your gracious God, Merry Christmas. Amen. Please stand. The Lord is good. And his love endures forever. His faithfulness continues through all generations. Amen. We'll now continue with our next hymn, Hymn 65, O Little Town of Bethlehem. That's found in those red hymnals. You may be seated.
The next part of our worship service in this Christmas story as told by the prophet Isaiah details the work that this Savior would do. You'll recognize our next response of reading is usually coming on Good Friday, Isaiah chapter 53. Let's stand and read these verses responsibly. Surely he took up our infirmities and carried our sorrows. But he was pierced for our transgressions. The punishment that brought us peace was upon him. We all, like sheep, have gone astray. Each of us has turned to his own way. He was oppressed and afflicted. He was led like a lamb to the slaughter. By oppression and judgment he was taken away. For he was cut off from the land of the living. He was assigned a grave with the wicked and with the rich in his death. Yet it was the Lord's will to crush him and cause him to suffer. He will see his offspring and prolong his days. After the suffering of his soul, he will see the light of life and be satisfied. Therefore, I will give him a portion among the great, because he poured out his life unto death and was numbered with the transgressors. You may be seated. This is what Isaiah, son of Amos, saw concerning Judah and Jerusalem. In the last days, the mountain of the Lord's temple will be established as chief among the mountains. It will be raised above the hills, and all nations will stream to it. Many peoples will come and say, Come, let us go up to the mountain of the Lord, to the house of the God of Jacob. He will teach us his ways so that we may walk in his paths. The law will go out from Zion, the word of the Lord from Jerusalem. He will judge between the nations and will settle disputes for many peoples. They will beat their swords into plowshares and their spears into pruning hooks. Nation will not take up sword against nation, nor will they train for war anymore. This is the word of our God. Let's sing God Rest You Merry Gentlemen together. Thank you. 
the last part of our worship service. And this Christmas story, as told by the prophet Isaiah, is the joy eternal that the good news of our Savior brings. But now this is what the Lord says. He who created you, O Jacob, he who formed you, O Israel, fear not, for I have redeemed you. I have summoned you by name. You are mine. When you pass through the waters, I will be with you. And when you pass through the rivers, they will not sweep over you. When you walk through the fire, you will not be burned. The flames will not set you ablaze. For I am the Lord, your God, the Holy One of Israel, your Savior. In that day you will say, I will praise you, O Lord. Although you were angry with me, your anger has turned away and you have comforted me. Surely God is my salvation. I will trust and not be afraid. The Lord, the Lord is my strength and my song. He has become my salvation. With joy you will draw water from the wells of salvation. In that day you will say, give thanks to the Lord. Call on his name. Make known among the nations what he has done. And proclaim that his name is exalted. Sing to the Lord, for he has done glorious things. Let this be known to all the world. Shout aloud and sing for joy, people of Zion, for great is the Holy One of Israel among you. This is the word of our God. Let's sing our next hymn, Hymn 52, on Christmas night, all Christians sing. At this time, we'll gather our thank offering. We won't be passing an offering plate, but there is a, an offering plate on the small table in the back. If you're so moved, you may drop your offering in that plate at any time. If you're a guest or a visitor with us tonight, it's important that you know you're not obligated to give an offering. We're simply happy to have you here and to share the Word of God with you. Your gifts, your offerings are certainly welcome and appreciated, though, because this is one of the ways that our congregation works together to take this good news of Jesus out into our community. Also, during this time of the offering, we'd kindly ask if everyone, whether you're a member of Living Shepherd or just a visitor with us tonight, please sign the friendship registers that are located beneath the, in the racks beneath the chairs at the center of each row. And maybe just two other quick announcements. During this time of the offering, we'll be passing out those individual candles that we'll use for the candlelight portion of our worship service. Uh, you'll see the note later on in the worship folder. When we get around to lighting those candles, we'd, we'd ask that for your safety uh, and for the safety of those around you, you don't tip a lit candle. You rather tip the unlit candle towards the lit candle. 
I think we probably all know how that works, but sometimes we forget. Um, also during this offering, we'll have a special musical selection played and sung for us. gave the sign bow to babe on bended knee the savior of humanity unto us a child is born he shall reign forevermore from the grave Christ the everlasting Lord He shall reign forevermore No well No well Come and see Please stand for prayer. Lord God, as we celebrate the birth of your Son, our Savior, we join with Mary, who rejoiced in your grace in sending Jesus. My soul glorifies the Lord, and my spirit rejoices in God, my Savior. We join in praising you with Zechariah, who understood so clearly what your Son would do to rescue all people from sin death and the devil. Praise be to the Lord, the God of Israel, because he has come and has redeemed his people. We join the angels 
in giving you the glory for the peace we now have through Christ. Glory, glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace to men on whom his favor rests. We join with Simeon in rejoicing that we now stand before you, blameless and holy through Jesus, eagerly looking forward to our true heavenly home. For my eyes have seen your salvation, which you have prepared in the sight of all people. We sing of your love, your mercy, and your grace. To us a child is born, to us a son is given. Amen. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. You may be seated. At this time, I'll proceed down the center aisle and light the candles, then the chair is closest to me, and I'd ask that you continue the flame down to the ends of the aisles. Please stand. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. Jesus is the light of the world. As we walk in the light, we have fellowship with one another and fellowship with Jesus, our King. Once we were darkness, but now we are light in the Lord. We will walk as children of light. Let us pray. O Holy Spirit, as the light of these candles drives away the darkness, so use the good news that Jesus has come to drive sin and doubt out of our hearts. Rule in us with your grace and your goodness, that we might be your grateful servants all through this life, until that day when we join the angel hosts in singing eternal praises to our King. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 Brothers and sisters, go in peace. Live in harmony with one another. Serve the Lord with gladness. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine on you and be gracious to you. The Lord look on you with favor and give you peace. Amen. Amen. You may be seated. <laughs> 
will now join in singing Silent Night, Holy Night. Please note that we'll sing the first three verses together. Then there will be a brief interlude while we read the Christmas story from Luke 2. And we'll conclude by repeating verse 3. And it came to pass in those days that there went out a decree from Caesar Augustus that all the world should be taxed. And this taxing was first made when Cyrenius was governor of Syria. And all went to be taxed, every one into his own city. And Joseph also went up from Galilee out of the city of Nazareth into Judea unto the city of David, which is called Bethlehem, because he was of the house and lineage of David to be taxed with Mary, his espoused wife, being great with child. And so it was that while they were there, the days were accomplished that she should be delivered. And she brought forth her firstborn son and wrapped him in swaddling clothes and laid him in a manger because there was no room for them in the inn. And there were in the same country shepherds abiding in the field, keeping watch over their flock by night. And lo, the angel of the Lord came upon them, and the glory of the Lord shone round about them, and they were sore afraid. And the angel said unto them, Fear not, for behold, I bring you good tidings of great joy, which shall be to all people. For unto you is born this day in the city of David a Savior, which is Christ the Lord. And this shall be a sign unto you, you shall find the babe wrapped in swaddling clothes, lying in a manger. And suddenly there was with the angel a multitude of the heavenly host, 
praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace, goodwill toward men. And it came to pass, as the angels were gone away from them into heaven, the shepherds said to one another, Let us now go even unto Bethlehem, and see this thing which has come to pass, which the Lord hath made known unto us. And they came with haste, and found Mary and Joseph, and the babe lying in a manger. And when they had seen it, they made known abroad the saying which was told them concerning this child. And all they that heard it wondered at those things which were told them by the shepherds. But Mary kept all these things and pondered them in her heart. And the shepherds returned, glorifying and praising God for all the things that they had heard and seen as it was told unto them. Good evening once again to all of you. Thank you so much for joining us tonight as we celebrate the gift of a Savior. As you go on your way tonight, there will be a, a tub that's in the hallway just as you leave those doors. You can place the candles after you've extinguished them in that tub. If you're a guest or a visitor with us tonight for the first time, we would love it if you would take a thank you gift. They're sitting on the back table. There's a coffee mug with a, a bunch of other gifts in there. Please help yourself to one of those gifts. May all of you have a safe, happy, and very blessed Christmas. <laughs> 